Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Glock Party number 63. Here we are with Vincent Arena of Trove, who's going to talk with us about, among other things, graphical design systems. Vincent, great to have you. Take it away. Awesome. Thanks, Jamin. So uh, what, what we were talking about was uh, in the kind of chrysalis branding system, how to create something where it can kind of be potentially decentralized, but also have a strong enough brand presence that it's easily identifiable, e easily identifiable. It's something that also is beautiful and that is also like I'm thinking able to be kind of customized and transferable. And so for example, they're like TED, uh, TED Talks. TED has the TEDx logo, but they let you kind of like say like, you know, TEDx Sydney, TEDx Long Island, and you can kind of add on your piece to, to make TED a part of your like local community. And, and so that's one example. Um, and I'm gonna just screen share real quick if you wanna pass that. Uh, the, the idea behind like systems, uh, graphical systems design is like when you go to Google uh, and you see like Google Calendar, Google Maps, Google, uh, Chrome, they all use a similar color scheme and similar like rounding of the, the icons. And so it feels like a cohesive set of logos, even though they're different products because they're in the same ecosystem. Um, another example of this is the MIT Media Lab. And so they created a new logo system, which as a system, they're able to basically create multiple logos from one logo and anyone could use that system to spin off a new one. So it's like, it's like a, a fractal logo. So for example, um, these are all different parts of the Media Lab. So this is like the Media Lab's library, the Media Lab's kindergarten, the Media Lab's like calendar. Um, and so let me pull up a higher quality, higher res image. Um, so they have a very simple kind of rule where any of the logos that are within the media lab need to kind of fit this grid, this grid pattern um, where, you know, they have probably one, two, three, four, five, it's a seven by seven pixel grid. And you have to basically create a logo out of this grid, but these all look like a very cohesive set of, of logos. Um, and then you have kind of rules for somebody wants to create a new one they could be creative, but they have to kind of fit into a certain criteria that gives the cohesiveness. So it's, it's this balance between constraints and flexibility that makes an interesting design system. Um, and so let's see, this uh, is an interesting example of the uh, Atlation logo, which is right here. Uh, I think this was, I don't know if this is actually what they're doing, but this is like a really interesting, like imagine having a chrysalis icon that was strong enough that people could customize it and they could create their own flavor of, you know, the chrysalis cookie baking calendar. I don't know. Um, but being able to have something where it's a, a design system uh, and there's like some complexity to this, but yeah, so like, you know, one way is creating a similar kind of just feeling of the iconography so that it fits. Uh, and then other ways are, are making a shape that you could then fill in the chrysalis with like, dip, maybe you make just like an outline and then anyone could kind of fill it in with what they want. Um, so that's an interesting, this idea uh, and, and making it's kind of like cohesive ecosystem of different chrysalis logos. So if Simon wanted to create the chrysalis marketplace and Jamin wanted to create the chrysalis uh, calendar, they might have two different logos, but they like fit together. So that's my idea proposition for chrysalis is how might we create a design system for the brand? You know, I. I love it, and I'd love to do a dimensional enhancement on your idea, uh, Vincent. What if we were to put up on the calendar um, this concept, right? And um, 
or put up on the, you know, on Trove, this concept with this record, literally this recording that's putting out the challenge. And we put it out as an open source uh, opportunity, challenge, you know, competition, whatever, to say, hey, who can come up with a, a graphical design system for the chrysalis, right? Uh, please come with your ideas, post them here, show up at meetings, you know, just demo it to us and get reactions, get feedback. And we become like, not a media lab, but a graphical design lab, a chrysalis lab, right? For, um, you know, giving people feedback who come with ideas and, and just see what emerges, right? And maybe one system will emerge, maybe multiple. Um, anyway, just uh, those are my thoughts. Mm -hmm. Passing the feather. This is Michael. I have to run, but uh, thank you all, especially Vincent and Jamin. Uh, Vincent, did you get your uh, GoFundMe or what have you, your uh, your donation page going, please? Thank you. Oop, I was muted. Thanks, Michael. Um, can you guys hear me? Everyone's frozen. No, oh, we can hear you and I can see Simon moving around. Okay. Yeah. Um, the so, door. yeah, I hopefully by next week we'll have a, a link to share. Thanks, Michael. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I mean, this call inspired me to do it. I, I'm still deciding whether I should do Patreon, Ko-Fi. There's a few open source ones that uh, like donation platforms that don't take a percentage that I was also looking into. Um, and, and some of the other, other ones for like nonprofits that I might want to, might want to support. They like donate a percentage of what gets donated to like other, you know, like social impact things. So uh, I'm still deciding which, which tool to, to use, but uh, yeah, as soon as I have that, I'll, uh, I'll share it next week. Thanks, Michael. Here's Michael. Following on from what you were saying, Vincent, um, for me, what we're talking about is the chrysalis as this transformative space. So it's inside the chrysalis. The chrysalis is almost like a womb. Um, so the chrysalis is around the outside. And anybody, and I'm thinking something like the B Corporation, we need some criteria to be allowed, almost like, an, like a kite mark should not be on the UK. So if you, if you want to use the chrysalis outside of your own logo, so your logo fits inside the chrysalis. And, and, and to be allowed to put the chrysalis outside of, around your logo, it's because it's been approved. It's a, it, it, you know, you've come to, you know, something like Jamin and others, you know, a, a, a board of trustees almost that determine whether something is behaving in such a way to be allowed to use the chrysalis logo outside of its own logo. Or behind it in some way, you know, to create the impression, you know, like a 3D aspect that it's, in, it's inside this space, part of this transformative space that we're trying to create collectively. Yeah, you know, Vincent, what was what was the name you had earlier that um, you know where where the uh, where where everybody policed the logo for proper use? What was the name of that? Oh, it's um community marks. And actually I have been um I think the the links that have come out of this uh, meeting I actually attached to the event page. So I'll send that and it's going to have all the links on it. Give me a second. Cool. Actually, you know, I'm going to screen share just so you guys can see how this, how this works. Oh, um, awesome. So once you're logged into Trove, uh, if you are a member or an admin of an event, you can edit the event page. And each event page has the information leading up to the event, like 
what's the time, what's going to be discussed, what's the title, who's going, who's invited. But then what I'm working on now is what comes after the event. How can we take all the knowledge and the discussions and the links and the projects that came out of the event and, and put them in a firmament of knowledge that other people can find, like leaving like a trail of breadcrumbs of what we've done and also be able to then, oh, what was that thing that I want to go back to during, uh, you know, what was the thing we discussed in the call? Uh, so I, I had a little feature where you could add like a title and then post a link and then um, the event page for anyone who views it will be able to see a list of all of the different uh, links that came out of that event. So I have the community marks, the examples of the design systems that I shared in the event page and that'll be here forever and uh, whoever wants to go back to it, look at it can. So let me post that in the in the Zoom chat, but that's one of the features I've been uh, working on this week and just testing it out right now. <laughs> awesome. And by the way, I really like Simon's idea about creating something almost kind of like a frame, right? Uh, like a picture frame, a painting frame, something that you know, frames it. So put whatever you got going on inside of it and voila, you're in the chrysalis kind of thing. Yeah, I love that idea too. I, I think, you know, something something where it's very minimal, where like you could almost fill the black in with anything. It could be a pattern, it could be an image, it could be a logo. Um, I, I think this is a, um, I like having that like branch because it adds a bit more context into what it is. Um, and I, I saw one other chrysalis icon that I actually really liked. I think this one is kind of cool. Vincent, when, when you're as successful as Zuckerberg or Bill Gates, how will you spend your billions? <laughs> um, well, I would hope to do it a little differently. Um, I think when people get to be a billionaire, they become so far away from the problems that it's like, how can I give my money away fast enough becomes an issue. And I think I would rather not be a billionaire in the first place and build things that are giving back as they're growing. And so I'd rather, you know, instead of like building something that is extracting wealth and giving it to me, and then when I'm successful, quote unquote, um, by having hoarded all the money, then give it away. I would rather be able to build something, have a comfortable, you know, salary uh, that I get paid to do what I love. And as I'm building things, the the kind of profit that comes in from those businesses or cooperatives, as it's being brought in, goes back and and in, in this kind of ecosystem approach, like in nature, like a tree you know, takes nutrients from the ground, but then in the fall, it drops them back down and it grows bigger each year, but it doesn't like take all the nutrients and then hold them in its trunk for 10 years and then decide, okay, I have all this fruit, what do I do with it? Uh, and then try to give it away. Like, like yeah, so I, I hope that answers the question, but. How about if we um, if we found a particular uh, design for a chrysalis that's just opening? Um, the chrysalis is actually just opening as as and that's the chrysalis network. But um, for you for the individual, then they can show their own logo breaking out of that particular chrysalis. Mm. So you know you can use it as an individual or or whatever. Like. That's a good idea. <laughs> it's kind of like, yeah, just like getting out of the... Um, yeah, like the, like the row of... Uh, there's a, just on the top left there, I know you can see there, um, there's a row of Christmas. Yeah, there's a row of chrysalises, you know, and there's a row of butterflies. But if there was a row of chrysalis and a row of different types of, um, you know, um, 
different brands then, you know, different groups coming out. Each one was a different design coming out of the, each chrysalis, you know, that kind of an idea, like so to give the person the idea or anyone coming in, the idea that they can, you know, become within the chrysalis and... Yes, I don't know, something and, like that. yes, and what if the different, you had a different design system and these were stages. So this could be a company that is still in the current capitalistic system, but wants to be better and is in the transition phase. And then if there is a cooperative or that is like actively being regenerative, they're benefited, they're, they're creating more positive for the world than they're taking away, uh, then they get to put their logo on the wing of a butterfly that's like outside of the chrysalis, right? So it's this kind of like, you can have like almost like a, um, I mean like the organic seal is like it's organic or it's not, but there are other things like lead certification where it's like silver, gold, platinum. So you could have different stages of, of, of systems and you can allow people to use certain logos depending on their stage. Yeah, exactly. That's a great idea. And, and also the, what you just said there, the idea of like, we're all butterflies, all the different groups or the individual groups will be butterflies. So keep the, blood, the butterfly and the chrysalis together, but just put your logo on the wing of the butterfly. Yeah, that's a great idea. I think there's also power in rejection. I mean, to say, you know, there are certain things that simply do not belong inside the chrysalis. They, you know, they need to be left behind. Yeah, that's, that's been a major theme this week, um, and it's an ongoing discussion. We had a really great conversation about that yesterday, which I sent out in last night's email, the recording of about an hour long, you know, what exactly defines the chrysalis. I'm taking a very radical approach myself, but anyway, this is an ongoing conversation, and I think we'll have a lot of the topics on the chrysalis calendar will center around this initially. We, what is the chrysalis? What do we mean by that? Right? So if Vincent decides he does want to become a billionaire, he's not allowed in. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys need me to be a billionaire to fund this, then maybe, you know, I'm kidding. <laughs> I think maybe, maybe millionaire is okay, but billionaire is a little much. The old saying, money corrupts? Yep. It was funny yesterday. This this came up. I forget in what part of the day, um, where we were talking about you know how people get to be billionaires, and I, I was like, I, and I said, does anybody here see me as a billionaire? I said, I can't see. I would never get there because I'd be giving it away so fast if it was coming in in a way that I, looks like I'm trending towards even a millionaire. I'd be giving it away so fast that. I don't want to reach that tax bracket where it's more, you know, just give it away. It might, where it'll do good, not let the government choose where it'll do good. Well, speaking of billionaires, a billionaire of awesomeness has just entered the room. It's Charles. And you know what, Charles, we were having a pretty cool time before you showed up, but listen, <laughs> with you here, now it's perfect. No one ever before called me a billionaire of awesomeness. So I really thank you for that. Um, that's a first, definitely. <laughs> Takes one to know one, dude. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. I'm gonna go on off camera just to make some food here, but I'm just uh, dropping in to see what's up. Awesome, you've come to the right place. Thanks, Charles. So Charles, we were, uh, well, we were, you know, gonna initially talking about um, trove and 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 then we got um, kind of swept into a conversation about uh, building off of the conversation we were talking about uh, previously in Botilla around design systems and how that how design systems might be useful for chrysalis to create a sort of um, branding of the chrysalis uh, that can be used across different uh, communities and different different tools, different um, maybe even have different stages of like development. Uh, and so yeah, we, we were talking about design systems and um, beautiful. That's a big one. I mean, I just um, 
didn't really know about that until just earlier and I'm super excited. And I think just in regard to the chrysalis, um, I mean, that's like a big scale version of all that <laughs> major um, undertaking to do that. Yeah. But definitely a cool idea. Actually, it's funny. I was just right before coming in here on the Mattermost, um, or I saw you mention something about that the names and feelings. And I was just wondering, I don't know if I'm totally interrupting, but since you're talking about this, you had made a mention about um, word map and um, with the names and then how they cluster and then refer to feelings. And I'm wondering what that's about, if, if that's uh, something quick to respond to. I, I was curious. So there's a uh, design principle, which is like, um feeling in um you know what here i'm gonna i'm gonna let's do an experiment give me a second i have to draw something that's all right i don't know if that was a good timing for the question because i i just jumped in so i'm yeah charles with you here it is perfect. And so the oh, stop, stop. It's okay. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna label them. All right. So there's uh, shape number one and shape number two. Um, so out of these two shapes, let's say you had these were your kids and you had to name them. And one is gonna be named uh, Boba. And the other one is going to be named Icky. Which one is Icky and which one do you name Boba? You're going to name your kid Icky? It's just, a, it's just an experiment. <laughs> Icky is the one with what? spiked hair and Boba is the ovalesque one. Yep. Does anyone disagree? Nope. Uh, it's not like, I mean, it could go either way. I, I mean, Look, we don't have a lot of context to go by here. Icky could mean something in, in a different language that's, you know, not what it means in English, but am I overthinking this? Probably. <laughs> I would say from design rules and psychology, you're wrong, uh, but you're not <laughs> wrong in general. Uh, you could think and do whatever you want. You can name your kids whatever you want, but it makes sense that the harsh uh, and like kind of pointy sounds of Icky it maps well to the shape, whereas something smooth like boba, it, it, it's, it, it, this is how boba feels. If you were to take yeah, a word and, okay. and give it a design, right? No, that's uh, cool. I, it's the yeah. same way that, that Facebook uses blue because blue feels trustworthy and red is vibrant and food. And so it, it's design psychology in some ways. Uh, but yeah, so like I was saying trove, uh, is like like treasure and flotilla is like a group of uh, like ships and, and so it has a kind of like nautical feel and like massive is like oh this is like a massive like trove and, and like so like there's a similar feeling there in the same way that like open global mind and Kiko lab uh, or collective intelligence and minds has like a similar feeling um, and so that's just another thing to think about with like branding is like the, the how does it feel? Uh, like, so chrysalis. The sound of it, yeah, I got it. The sound of it, the imagery that it evokes because of the meaning of the words. Um, so like chrysalis feels very natural and like, like, yeah, like if you made a word map, if we put chrysalis and we put words around it, like womb, transformation, nature would all be similar words. Um, cool. Thank you. That was helpful. Yeah. So it's like multiple factors um, bundled into what generates the, the various feelings. Yeah. There's, um, does anyone here like Legend of Zelda? Not hip. I mean, I heard the name, but I don't know. It's not me. Like it, haven't played it in years. I think my wife got all that stuff in the divorce. Um, there's this incredible YouTube video uh, 
it's called the, I think it's the masterclass of subtext. And it, it, you don't have to actually play the game to, to know about it, but uh, it talks about how this video game, not through what was actually said, but through the subtext, through the emotions that came behind the visuals of the game, it, it, it made people feel a certain narrative and story without even using words in the same way that your body posture communicates and your tone of your voice communicates almost more about what you're saying than the actual words themselves. So there's just a lot, like we don't just communicate with words in the same way that we don't just see with shapes uh, and we don't just read with text and letters. Like we, we take into consideration the way that things sound, the way that they feel, the way that they look, the way that they bring up relationships to other things that we've experienced in how we understand and perceive the world. Uh, and so, yeah, it's a really cool watch if anyone is interested in that. If you're a writer or uh, an artist or a creator of anything visual, it's a very interesting thing to think about as a, a principle uh, to design things where um, the, the subtext can sometimes speak more loudly than what's in the text like reading between the lines, so to say. So I don't know how helpful this is, but. <laughs> no, super helpful. All these conversations are super helpful. And uh, for, my, for my taste and where my heart's at with all this, the more of these kinds of conversations, the better as we feel our way into the chrysalis and the process for me is very much like personally is like an imaginal cell waking up in the goo and I call it sticky eyes. I'm waking up with sticky eyes and just, you know, figuring out where I am in the chrysalis. And I think all that's a process for all of us to, to really embrace. Um, anyway, so I'm loving it. Thank you. I had actually a question to tag on. Um, for Jamin, in, in terms of because you, I, um, I gather you came across um, this d design systems uh, ideas in your days at Microsoft, and I'm just curious if you did or to what extent, and also how, if you've tracked it at all, if convinced it, maybe you know like some somewhat of the trajectory of how that's evolved, because it must not be that new. I just I hadn't really heard about it as, in as much detail as, until today, but. No, no, just curious how that you know where that's at today compared to yesterday kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I didn't even hear about the term design system until today that that Vincent brought it. Of course, you know I'd been familiar with Microsoft's design system without even giving it a name. It's just like, well, of course, that's how we that's how we do logos and branding and all that. We're you know we we followed certain patterns, but I didn't even have a name for it. And of course, you know Vincent's brought the examples of Google and and others. Uh, MIT Media Lab, um, for instance. Um, but no, no, I haven't done any deep thinking about it at all. I'm just really new to it, but I'm loving it. I think it's super cool. So yeah, I think, it, I think it'd be interesting maybe to have a, uh, yeah, a whole conversation about uh, design and maybe throw out some, some ideas for like logos. Um, I'm wondering, uh, does anyone know anyone that's very talented in the actual like graphical execution? I'm, I'm, that's not my strength. I, I, I'm much better at the system uh, part of it, but like the actual like, okay, we're gonna make the Christmas logo. We're gonna like the, the details of the shape and the colors and stuff. Uh, I'm wondering if anyone knows anyone or uh, yeah, who might be interesting to join us for a call uh, about that. Well, my, my partner, uh, Melissa, she's an artist and comes from a family of artists. Um, and, but I, I, I personally like the idea of just really kind of open sourcing it and just saying, hey, who's interested in participating in the next great, you know, graphical art design system for transforming life on earth for the chrysalis phase. And, you know, just, as we, as we put out our myriad messages about the chrysalis and the different facets of the chrysalis and this phase and this movement of movements, et cetera, you know, just put out the call 
and see who shows up and what they show up with. That that's where that's just where I'm at. And speaking of speaking of that, um, I was just doing some image searches on butterfly wing close up is what I I put in. Look at this one where I'm moving my mouse on the right. This very colorful one. So imagine that we had a framing like this, right? And then inside you put you know your stuff here, and then it's like oh that's that's in the chrysalis. Oh cool, you know per per Simon's idea, right? Um, Anyway, because if you if you look close up at a butterfly wing pattern, which of course is of course post chrysalis, but it's so beautiful. If you look up close, some of these magnified images, um, and uh, anyway, that's just an idea. Like look, look at some of these; just they're just really beautiful. And so I think we could do a nice kind of framing or texturing with this, and it's like oh oh, oh that's part of chrysalis now. Okay, cool. Right, interesting. Like, like, yeah. yeah. So I'm wondering if anyone has anything else. Uh, yeah, on their minds relating to kind of the like logo design branding stuff. If, if not, uh, I'd be happy to yeah kind of dive a bit more into Trove and some of the um, updates since last week. And uh, anyone who's not on or has questions, I'd love to yeah open open up that dialogue. But I guess first, does anyone um, on this thread that we're on have anything else? I just, I, I guess since I haven't been around, uh, sorry, I got to close my fridge. I just was uh, curious if there was a quick update in terms of um, the, like the calendar functionality and, and um, I obviously haven't looked or I wouldn't ask the question um, in terms of all the, all the Radish um, universe stuff on there. Is it, is it already happening or where is that at? Yeah, 